all these fans want to make it want to make it AEW versus WWE or want want to attack anything going on in the backstage of AEW because they know it's going to get clicks, it's going to get mentions, it's going to it's going to get engagement and they're just going to they're just going to keep doing it because they're hungry for it. The title of this episode, Ben, I just decided Let's hear it. I think it really just going to be like wrestling fans are so damn stupid. Here comes trouble. It's me, it's me, it's that into the TTG rolling once again with that BTW, Big Trouble, Big Vision, taking up the whole screen, and you got myself, Nikki the Good, and we have the Me Pop Express, and boy, to another jam-packed episode for you today. Listen, it's going to be a freaky fast one here, brother, because we got things to do. It's Thursday night, I just got back from the gym, I hit the Stairmaster, I'm sweating like a pig How many minutes? Right now. How many minutes on Stairmaster? I did 40, I've been increasing it by 5 Ooh, minutes. How many floors, though? I don't know, I didn't look at oh, it. Oh, didn't look at the floors. My, it's 6... 410 in 60 minutes is my is my all-time record. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever You can do it. I you can just, do it. I, you can do it. Yeah. You can do it, Nick. Okay, I can do it. I'm going to I'm going to try it. Um Ben's also a lot younger than me. Um and he's got longer legs. <laughs> but that's probably helpful. That's probably better for, for me if I have I'm shorter not sure. legs because, right? Someone now someone right, can can, can some scientist please let us know on Twitter. Please let us know yeah. if shorter or longer legs are better for the stairmaster. Yeah. Speaking of scientists on Twitter, we have a lot of them in the pro wrestling community, mm -hmm, sure and do. that's what we're going to get into today. So we're going to cover two things today. We're going to cover the drama that there isn't that that isn't with Mercedes Monet already, and it has all to do with you dumb fans out there. It has nothing to do with actually what's going on. But we really want to talk about the tribalism that goes on in professional wrestling this week because it's just crazy that everyone's excited about Mercedes Monet, and then you still have idiots making face fake Facebook accounts of Britt Baker to try and just make something out of nothing. You guys are dumb, stupid morons. Like, stop doing this shit. Th this is what wrestling fans are just the bottom of the barrel fan base. Like, they're so passionate, but they're also just a bunch of idiots. And then the other thing we're going to talk about is we're going to go through, we'll play a little bit of March Madness here with the current um, WWE WrestleMania I guess push here. And we're going to throw out some uh, seeds and who we think is uh, who we think is the top seed, who we think is kind of the eight seeds, and then our Cinderella story stories ben so you ready to get into this ben let's get into it let's rock all right here we go listen so this is what's going on all right so yesterday apparently there was like this fake facebook account from Britt baker who do you really think that Britt baker is gonna write something on facebook you idiots like do you really think that Britt baker the dmd is gonna go on facebook and like <laughs> Like, how fucking stupid is this, Ben? This is, no, I this mean, is look dumb. at this. This is, dumb. this is what this thing says. This is what this thing says. Dave Mel and this was a fake Facebook account, right? So it's yep. not Britt Baker's account, but it's fake. It goes, the exposed turnbuckle. That's the name of it, because that's what wrestling what bad, fans what do. What a bad they, name. They name their brands after thinking pro wrestling. Dave Meltzer is reporting that there are women backstage at AEW who are unhappy about the amount of money Tony Khan is paying Mercedes Monet. It's simply because of her name. The initial belief is that women who have been there since day one and have shed blood for the company, helped build it, aren't even getting 10% of what Mercedes is getting paid. Meltzer, by the way, Meltzer spelled wrong every 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 way. So Dave Meltzer may have written this because there's a grammatical error. <laughs> he may have leaked this. Meltzer also reports that there are AEW higher-ups who aren't impressed with Monet's comments regarding her certainly heading back to WWE one day just weeks after she signed her WWE con AEW contract. Now... I'm rolling my eyes between the, in, in, behind these sunglasses, just so everybody knows. Now, Ben, I've talked a lot, which is what I say every episode. What are your initial thoughts on this? Um, all right, so initial thoughts. Whenever sports are involved or any type of competition, now we know what wrestling is, right? It's a work. But again, it's a competition. It's entertainment. You want to be at the top. Will there always be jealousy in that? Yes. Of course, not everyone's going to be happy all the time. You're going to be a little bit envious of the person that might be a little bit above you or coming in, you know, at a higher at a higher rate or it's like, "Hey, I've been here, you haven't." So maybe there have been a little bit of rumbling. I'm not going to say there hasn't. There might have been a few being like, oh, "Man, I wish I wish I could have that spot." You're always going to have those type of people in any sport. It doesn't matter what it is. Basketball, baseball, it, it, in the and in, in entertainment, in the movies, in music, you're going to have people who are going to be envious of individuals who are at a higher spot than them. 
it happens. So in that sense, I bet you there has been some type of rumblings around that. Now, to speak on, is it, you know, we don't live in a quote unquote fair society. Life isn't fair. It's not fair. There's two sets of rules. I've mentioned this on the podcast before. Star players, stars, superstars, they get another, they get their own set of rules. Look at The Rock right now in WWE. Look at you know, the other thing last week was everyone's complaining The Rock's getting more time. The Rock gets to swear. We don't get to swear. We don't get to say what The Rock gets to say. The Rock gets to do what The Rock wants to do because of who The Rock is. Mercedes Monet is coming in at a higher rate than other females on the card because of who she and is. And men. And, and men. men. And men, for that matter. As Probably well. the majority of the roster. Probably, actually. You're right. Correct. So she's coming in higher than the majority of wrestlers on the AEW roster because of who she is and what she has created, her, her persona, her marketability, what she's created you think for she, herself. It doesn't, you think I don't she's care. Making more, Go ahead. Do you think she's making more money than Osprey? I bet you it's similar. I bet you it's, if it's... If it's right? I don't think I I actually because only because of her being a more household name in America. I think, I think she's hundred percent paid more I think than so. Osprey. I think I think that without I, a doubt. I think that's the case. I I hundred percent think so too. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, because she's more known here in America on American TV than Osprey is. Side note: Osprey's promo last night was unbelievable. Again, he's he's so this, good. he's so good. We're gonna, <laughs> are, 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 we're gonna take a little detour from the topic because I really need to get in on Osprey. Because I, this is the one where I don't even think I really ever took it to Osprey online. Like I don't really think I ever should talk them because but we didn't give him I, enough respect when we didn't talk about him. We enough. did. We, didn't talk. we did not give him enough respect. <laughs> this motherfucker is the <laughs> He's dude, so bro. Good. I am all in, dude. Honestly, I guys, I will give him a pass with all the shit he does in the ring. That I'm care. like, that kind of doesn't make sense. I don't care because if you could do that on yeah. the mic, looking like you do. Painting a picture with – he is the fucking total package, bro. I pray this guy actually does go to WWE one day. But right now, he should be the face of AEW and him and Max. I need him and Max in a program like I need mm-hmm. air yeah. in my lungs. Yeah. We will get into the – you can well, say well, we're gonna be about talking. Osprey and then and – I don't even need to. I think, I think you know, he's in, the, in man. the foreseeable future, we'll be talking a lot about Will Ospreay. So yes. we'll save it for today. But just so you know, we're a big pro Will Ospreay. I had to. I had to. Time. The promo was he's so un- fucking he's, good. he's unbelievable. But back to back to the topic. I just want to know who's getting – who. And we, you know, it's like we speak about this ad nauseum, but, like, who's giving this information? Because I – what it could have easily been, Nick, is easily somebody saying, ah, man, you know, I've just been I've been bummed about my spot and I just, you know, I just wish I could have I could have an opportunity that, you know, Mercedes has right now. I'm just you know, I'm just not getting the I'm not getting that opportunity. That could be as simple as that. Not, you know, them motherfucking and saying, you know, oh, this isn't this isn't fair, I'm pissed, you know, we built this company. It could just be somebody saying, you know, I'm jealous of her. I wish I had that spot. That's and there's nothing wrong with saying that. It's it, that's basic human instinct. But here's my thing, though. I don't even think this was based off anything. I think this was just somebody who was like, you know, you can make up this story out of thin air. Like this is an easy oh, yeah, story or it could to be write. Made, yeah, yeah right? exactly. Because look, because yeah. think about it. Because so what happens here is, and this is how stupid fans are. This is how dumb our fan base has been. This is why I sometimes find it hard. I'm like, why do I associate myself with these low IQ? Oh, I cool. I can't say that. I'll cut that so I don't sound like an idiot. With Keep these, it in. <laughs> why do I associate myself with these low IQ Dairy Queen loving bums? Listen, listen to this. The, the account is Triple H's thoughts <laughs> at Triple H Paul L goes, which is a funny account. It is it's a funny. funny it account. is funny. Goes go. He they screenshot the Facebook post and it says Britt Baker calling Meltzer the minute the ink dried on Mercedes contract smiley face laughing emoji now first of all I don't like that because I love Britt Baker I I don't that is not Britt Baker's character at all like both Mm. in real life and on screen right she ain't gonna be the one she thinks she you know she she's like I'm the fucking shit I'm the best Mm -hmm. that's Britt Baker she ain't gonna go on crying about anybody's contract right that's not her but listen, then 
all of you morons actually thought that this was a real report. So you started attacking Britt Baker mm -hmm. and, and lighting up her mentions. So Britt had to actually respond to you algae lowlife morons. She goes, she actually quote tweets Triple H's thoughts account and goes, and this is why I love Britt. This is why I love because she keeps it real, man. She's like a regular person who just so happens to be a huge star. This is a fake Facebook account phone post, you dumb fuck. Excuse my language, trips. You can all post your apologies in the comments below. Like, this is what happens in pro wrestling because you know what? Some people are not going to see that Britt cleared this up and they're going to go about their day thinking that Britt Baker is complaining about Mercedes Monet's contract. That's what's happening right now. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? And a lot of these, a lot of these like Twitter accounts and a lot of the YouTube, uh, channels they get clicks off this shit because the, the, it, all these fans want to make it want to make it aw versus wwe or want want to attack anything going on in the backstage of aw because they know it's going to get clicks it's going to get mentions it's going to it's going to get engagement and they're just going to they're just going to keep doing it because they're hungry for it they want they want that and they want to continue this like infighting even though there, there there's there really isn't any it's a normal locker room I'm telling you. The I'm, title of this episode, Ben, I just decided. Let's hear it. I think it really just going to be like wrestling fans are so damn stupid. And then I'm going to have a big fucking picture of Brit and and and, and Mercedes. There you go. Right on the top. There you go. I think just that's four, the top. Because four very attractive people on the on the thumbnail. That's another thing that we I have trouble with. The fact that we have to sit next to these people at these shows and I look like this. Yeah. And, and they, I look and like they this. they look like that. Yeah. Ben, you're legitimately seven feet tall. Mm -hmm. I'm not. But we're attractions, baby. Yeah, we are. Like, how are we associated with these people? We're, it's annoying. It's the life we've chosen, Nick. We've <laughs> chosen we've this. Chosen. We've chosen. We, we are trying to be the light in the darkness that is wrestling fandom right now. That's what I thought this was. I thought when we started this show, everyone would be like, wow, look at these guys. Good looking. Have Have actual jobs. Have, they pay actual bills. They don't have debt. You know, they're mm -hmm. not hanging out at the, you know, you know, like at the, Outside, the food court, yeah, food court and, yeah, in a mall, eating, eating Panda shoving, Express. You know, they're not, they're not hanging out. Like me and Ben, we're not the type of guys that are like the other wrestling fans where we're hanging out at the mall, like eating orange chicken samples oh. and bourbon chicken samples and just making oh. rounds and rounds and rounds. At the old, uh, you know, food court at the mall. Oh, We're not dude, doing I was that. I was just at a convention on Long Island. This Talk past to me, weekend. baby. Talk oh. to me. Oh, the smell, Nick. The smell mm. that emanated from that mm. from the Suffolk County Community College. Oh, disgusting. Well, that's by Hofstra. Yeah. By Hofstra, yeah, yep. yeah. That's where I went to college. Yep, yep. And let me tell you though, the fan coming in that place, Stink. stinky, stinking up the joint. It's always been one. <laughs> the spy, my five senses were just firing on all cylinders and not in a good way. So, I feel uh, like someone your size should have like nine senses. You, you would think, right? You would think. We got to figure out what the rest are. Anyway, so. <laughs> you put me on the spot. Now what the hell would they I, be? I don't know either. Maybe that, man, we have an episode dedicated <laughs> to that. Um, I also think that this stems from a little bit why people are pushing this out here is because – I don't think Monet's promos have been that strong. No, and unfortunately. I, they really need to figure out a way mm. to make her sound better on the mic. And I think it's because primarily it's because she's a baby face right yeah. now. That just doesn't work are, for are her. You she's sick, not a baby face. Are you sick of like the I'm happy to be here promo I hate as much it. as me? Because I can't, I can't I take it. Because Osprey didn't do the I'm happy to be. And he's a baby face. He didn't do the I'm happy. He got right into it. He got right you into know why it. I hate that she, you know why I hate that she says that? It's because... It's the money. Like, she clearly was holding out for money with WWE. Mm -hmm. Like, that is not a secret. And we kind of like, all that, know that. Yeah, That's a common sense thing. I don't need any reports to tell me that. And if anybody says that's not the case, I'm just going to call bullshit and be like, you're, no, that's not the case at all. Like, I, I, think she's a lean, I think she's a lean into that. And, like, you can still be a face, but you can be kind of almost a tweener and just and lean into the fact that she's hey, you know going what? to you know what he paid me a ton of money and i'm here she's I'm happy she's 100 percent going I'm happy to. to be here because my bank account is happy that i'm here. right so. like she's going to she's gonna do that like she if she's the ceo I hope like she's so. gonna push all of that but right now i don't feel like this is doing her any favors like whenever she faces willow which i disagree with again like i, I mean I, like 
nothing against Willow, but like, let's just use common sense. Like, I think it's something like, to start out with, though. I, I I see what I see what you're saying. I think we got to lean into. I think Brit should lean into this report though and make it part of the storyline. I think why not? I just don't. I, I the I, thing I, about Willow is that I don't like the fact that it's based off a story that didn't happen yeah, in AEW. Yeah, like, that's what I don't like. Like you don't need to have to push it to Willow. Nothing against Willow. But, like, I'd rather the story originate in AEW and not be like, oh, this happened in, in New Japan. Yeah, no, I know. I don't what like you're that. Saying. I see what you're saying. I, when, it, when it comes to Brit, though, if I, I would – I think Brit, like, understood, like, making that, making that post, make like, this is fake, and I'm getting sick of it because I think I would do the same thing. So I, I'm not going to say what she did was wrong. But, man, wouldn't it be great if she just leaned into this? Like, how kind of how Drew's doing? You know, yeah. Like Drew's and like leaning into like that. He really hates CM Punk. Maybe there's a little animosity. I don't know. I don't know either. Hundred percent. But there like, has to be. there has to be. But like, upping it to eleven and being like, you know what? Why don't I just? I know this is gonna work. So why don't, why doesn't Brett just be like, yeah, I am sick of you. Be I don't want you here. I built this place. You don't deserve to be here. And yeah, I'm bitching about it. But you know what? It's deserved. And you because and you shouldn't be because I'm the one who should be the top dog here, not you. Right. I should be the CEO, not you. I'm DMD. This, that, and the other. I would do that. I think that would be great. And if you could, that's do definitely it's got to be coming. I mean, I hope Brit so. is the one. Brit is the one. It has to be. If it's not Brit, it's an absolute travesty that the the biggest high profile match that, Sa that Sasha that Mercedes has right out the gate is Britt Baker. Britt Baker is still, in my eyes, the face of AEW's women division. Yep. I do not care what anyone has to say. She is it. She also has the ability to be a very good baby face and a very good heel. So however you want to play it, it can be done. I do think you got to get Monet as a as a heel. It's got to happen right after this Willow thing. Mm -hmm. Like have her smash Willow, do bad things to Willow, have her put her down, embarrass her. That's got to happen. We got to see the real CEO, and maybe that's what this is setting up. Maybe this is a curveball to make you kind of feel like things are being tempered with her, that she is happy to be here, and then she just drops on a dime because Monet can do that. Yeah, like she can do that as a heel. Period. Um, I think that kind of covers it. I mean, really, yeah. like I just need. I felt like this was the hot thing to talk about because it literally just dropped yesterday. And Baker responded. Even our boy JD got in the mix. He started taking the he started taking the bait, commenting on it as if it was like a real report. And uh. then she, she even comments, she's like, JD, like, don't start. Like, just like <laughs> stop. Like, <laughs> like, come on. Like the thing about JD is listen, I don't agree with everything he has to say. I've said the guy's polished in his in his in his everything he's done. He's the most polished guy, period. Say what you want, hate him, despise him, whatever. I don't give a shit. The guy's polished with his presentation. But you're smarter than this, dude. Yeah. Like, why are you even commenting? It'll just come out and do what you normally Just shit on everybody and just say, listen, you're a bunch of idiot dumb marks like we do. Like, I'll do it for you. I just did it for you. Congratulations. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, what can I say except you're, you're welcome. welcome. Uh, um, what a pop that was when I heard that. And what a great and what a great segue. See how I did that? That's why I'm the best in the game. Mm -hmm. um, with Ben. With Ben. I am literally one half, maybe less than a half, figuratively and literally of this tag team we have here um let's move into the uh, final the final boss the final round Oof. of this show i want to talk about a little bit about march madness and weave yep. it into what we got going on in wwe right now so we're getting into wrestlemania wrestlemania is right around the corner we're going to finish up our tiers probably next week so we can close that out but fellas Let's 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 seed some of these people because it, we've seen kind of the way that WrestleMania is playing out. But let's look at it from a tournament perspective. If this was March Madness, who's going to be our top seed? Who's going to run to the finals and finish it? Who's going to be? Who's in the mid seed? Who's an eight seed mm -hmm. that is just kind of like that may surprise you, that may have an upset, or may just fade off into the sunset? And then who's that sixteen seed Cinderella that's going to? potentially steal the show and become a star ben do you have anyone in mind can we knock out at least the top seeds real quick for the what the top seeds or the cinderellas would you say who are the number one seeds right oh, i mean now? the number the, the those are the easy ones let's, let's just knock let's, those let's talk about the number one seed so roman reigns top overall seed at wrestlemania right you could put the rock there too but i mean roman has roman's been there he's done that he's been there for the last some odd years, who knows? Like I can't even count at this point. But he's he's the, the guy you got to. He's beat. been at the top forever, man. He's the he's the Dukes. He's the Yukons. He's had multiple titles, you know. And he is the guy you have to beat if you want to beat. 
If you want to beat the man, you got to beat the man. So Roman Reigns, number one overall seed. The Rock, obviously, coming back. They're like, you know, they're like the Houston this year. One of the best, the number one overall seed just for this year. But, you know, isn't there all the time. Isn't there? Has, has been really good in the past. Has won titles in the past. But they're there this year, and, they're, and they, they are the number one overall seed. Obviously, he's the biggest draw this year, while Roman is, is the guy that's been there all the time. And he's like the, okay, he's the top. He's the Duke. He's the UConn. Brock, like, more like the Houston. Is just kind of now he's a number one seed this year. Maybe not every year, but a number one seed this year. Those are my top two number one seeds. Other than that, people would want to say Cody's a number one seed, but I, here's the thing with Cody. Here's where I'm going to put Cody. I'm putting Cody in that like plucky like three four seed, where really? like the Butler in 2009 and 2010 that made it to the finals two years in a row, where it was like nobody thought Butler, this mid major team. Could make it. You're playing the, into the storyline. I'm playing. Like, the, you're yeah, not, you you're got not it. taking you it that we because no. we know that Cody's the face. He's yeah. the biggest baby face. Of so he, on 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 the surface, he's a one. But if you're actually going according to the story, he's not. That's how I'm doing this. So I would say he's that plucky three four seed like the BYUs. You know, the past when they had Jimmer Fredette and they were they were really good. Or Gonzaga when they had Adam Davidson Morrison. With, with yeah, Curry. David, Davidson with Curry. Those type of teams who made runs. Uh, but I've mostly it's that Butler team. The Butler team that had Gordon Hayward um, and Matt. Uh, I forget his name, the other big guy that they had. But those really good Butler teams in 2009 2010 who made it to the finals two years in a row. One of those years lost to Duke. I forgot the other team that they lost to in the other year. But that's, the, that's Cody. That's Cody. You know, it's a it's a Midwest team. You know, all American. Mid. You know, I know Cody's from Georgia. So don't think I don't know where he's from. He's from Marietta, right down the street from where I am. But you got to put him in that in that type of category. So moving on to other ones, Nick. Who do you got? What other seeds do you want? All right, let's go with some eight seeds for some you. Eight then. Seeds, let's go. So, well, let's go with some true eight seeds, guys that have potential, yeah. could make a run, could be in the main event. You know, we're talking intercontinental. The US, we're talking about yeah. guys that you might see challenge for the title after Mania, things like that. Who do you got in the eight seeds? So eight seeds are weird, right? Because eight seeds usually go to those high major teams that were kind of middle of the pack in their conference, usually finishing around fourth. In the conference, you know, didn't have a stellar year, didn't have their best year that they've ever had. And this year, you know, it's like the Michigan State, uh, Mississippi State, Michigan State, those type of teams are in those eight, nine seed type games. Or you have that like Florida Atlantic type team from a smaller conference, but had an unbelievable year. And yeah, they're not going to be a top six, top, you know, top five team in a seed, but they're going to be that eight, nine. So you kind of have those plucky type of upstart mid-major really good mid-major teams but then you also have the high majors who are like have been there done that and just aren't you know aren't at that like top seed level so i would really say really quick really quick spoiler i don't really watch college basketball ben clearly does hence why for a rare occasion i have been not talking Continue. i have i have i played in the tournament twice folks so i'm talking what from experience yes yeah. like oh you didn't know that I didn't know you were in the NCAA. Yeah. Tournament. Oh, yeah. I played for Vermont. Yeah. Yeah. But I was in the. Yes. Uh, 2010. Well, I I was on the team. And you have footage. I, yeah. Yeah. I I was on. I was part of ESPN top ten. I got dunked down by James Michael McAdoo. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. How are you not tell me this? I swear to God, got, I just I just put a picture on Twitter this morning. No, not a picture. I need the fucking video. We got to put that shit on Twitter, oh, man. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I I usually it usually surfaces every year of James Michael McAdoo dunking on me, so I'll post it later. Uh, Post it later. We need to. We need like highlight reels. <laughs> There's like, not much. There's not much. I did score on North Carolina though, and the guy said on commentary, I forgot who it wait, was. Wait, you did score? Oh you got, yeah. You got a bucket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had three points in that game. So uh, three points and a rebound. Um, so they said it was against North Carolina in 2012, and it was so funny because the guy goes, "Not a lot of elevation, but a lot of vocation." <laughs> I was just moving that guy around, the backup center for North Carolina. Uh, Tyler Zeller was a goddamn problem. Let me tell you that he was a fucking monster, tough to tough Piece to guard. Of shit. But yes, yeah. no. Oh, uh, 2010 and 2012, I was in the NCAA tournament, Syracuse and North Carolina. I actually, won a game in the in the tournament. Beat Lamar. Beat Lamar congrats, in the, play, congrats. In the play-in game. So I have one NCAA tournament win under my belt. All right, so folks, so I am, I am the only one in independent wrestling currently, and maybe almost all the professional wrestling who played in the NCAA tournament. So I don't know if Omos did, and I'm not sure any other basketball players, but 
I am the subject matter expert on this. So yes. let me continue. So who's an eight seed? Let me continue. Eight seed, I would give that to a guy like a Kevin Owens. He's been there. He's been there. He's still in contention. It's like, okay, okay, we could see him winning the game here. We could see him doing his thing, but like we're not going to be surprised if he loses. You know, Randy, that's like a that's a perennial like two three seed right there. Randy you know, has to be a two he's seed. A, he's like a two. We he's can't yeah, yeah he is that like two that, three. Right. He's like that Kentucky. Sami Zayn, I'd say, Kentucky. is an eight seed. A now nine. I, let me get now. Sami Zayn could make a case for that eight nine seed being that mid major, but I'm gonna because of my alma mater and the storyline going in. My alma mater, University of Vermont, is playing Duke tomorrow night in the NCAA tournament. A 13 seed playing the four seed. I'm giving Sami Zayn. I'm saying he is the Vermont this year. Everyone's saying he can't win. He can't beat Gunther. And I know because I've heard the chatter. Everyone's saying there's no chance Vermont is going to beat Duke. But I've been watching Duke closely. I've been looking at them. And there's some holes in Duke's game. And I'm not going to say it in case a bunch of Duke fans and, and Coach K and, and John Shire are watching right now. You so I'm blue not devil say pussies. It. Not going to say it. But Vermont has a chance because Vermont's a very good team, very good defensive team. And they can, get, they can figure out the holes in Duke's game. So I'm going to put Sami Zayn as the Vermont Catamounts. No one's saying he has a chance. But I think he can figure out Gunther. He's been there. He's done that. Vermont, 20 years, 11 title, America East titles. Won a game in the tournament, one of the most iconic calls in the NCAA tournament of all time. Sorrentine from the parking lot beating Syracuse in 2005. I think that we're due for another, well, Vermont's due for another NCAA tournament win. But I think Sami Zayn can possibly score the upset over Gunther. So I'm going to put him, I'm going to put Zayn as that 13-12 seed that we now, every year, we see a 13-12 seed win. Yep, we just so we and, see and it for, for for you guys. Keep a track. We just became. We just took a. We just took a left hand turn to becoming a sports a college football <laughs> college, podcast, college basketball uh, college basketball podcast. Thank you, Ben, for that breakdown. Of what the hell is going on now? Um, now let's talk about real low seeds now here. Nate. Okay, low seeds. Who do we got? Because we got like the McIntyre. Wait, right? one more, one more, yeah, yeah, one yeah. more before we move on. Where's LA Knight? Ooh, where ooh, where that's is a he? Good one. I'm putting I'm putting LA Knight. Because he's a guy who hasn't been there. Now he's starting to. He's like he's a, a thirteen seed to me. He's 13, a thirteen. 13 yeah. 12. Okay. I was gonna say I was because gonna say they kicked the dude. He was in the main event picture, and now they even an AJ Styles. Yeah. With like going he's on. like he's like that team that was he's real got hot. disrespected. He's yeah. he's disrespected. He was real hot at the beginning of the year. He's one of the, he's like, he like yes. had like that. Maybe he went on yes. like a fifteen game win streak to start the year. Then all of a sudden conference turn conference play started and started to go down a little bit, a little bit down. Maybe you know like this year, maybe like a Florida. Florida started. That's what I'm saying. Hop. Florida He's started hopping. They're a seven seed. So I would say, you know, around that, maybe. He he has. He's been in the main event. He's been there. But you know what? He took a little bit of a – started going down, 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 and like it wasn't – Well, they had, a, they had a pivot to The Rock. Yeah. So, and him and The Rock doing promos, like even though Meltzer did call out – Meltzer basically put out a, a, a tweet saying that he's – like his promos copying The Rock. Like first of all, Meltzer, like – what are you talking about? Like, you got to draw inspiration from somewhere. Like, yes. The Rock has been gone for 20 years. LA Knight has his own catchphrases. He has his own delivery. Yes, of course he drew inspiration from The Rock. Just like Ben draws inspiration from Kevin Nash. It is, who yeah, gives a who shit? Gives it, it, He's entertaining. Oh, I want to take... He's I more entertaining take... than the, the, the Keshka, who you defended for 37 hours yesterday. You think Takeshka is better than LA Knight? No, he's fucking not. He's not even close to being better than LA Knight. Not they're not even on the same why, why level. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to emulate people that were over? Like it's like not Jesus Christ. Like, yeah, no. Dude. Let's emulate uh, uh, Suzuki. Yeah, like uh, yeah, who? I don't, yeah, exactly. You don't even know. So I don't even. Yeah, know. I mean, does he? I mean, Meltzer, you're making fun of Eddie Kingston for emulating all the all Japan guys from the 1990s. He does all the same stuff. He's trying to do all the same stuff. shit. So like, and, and and it's nice fine jacked. if he does it, and like it's fine if he does it. But I mean, nothing against him. But like, you don't call mm-hmm. that out. But you call out LA Knight. But uh, Ben, let, talk to me about some uh, Cinderellas, though. So some Cinderellas. I mean, I mean, folks, if you if you don't follow college basketball, we know the Cinderellas of the past, the UMBCs, which was bittersweet to me because I never lost to UMBC in my time at Vermont. Played them ten times, ten and zero. Here he goes no again. Big deal, he no goes big again, deal. Folks, no big deal. Want, so the meat pop. The meat. The meat pop. Uh, what are we gonna call this podcast now? The meat. The, the meat the, shot. The meat. The, the meat, meat. The meat. Who? Uh, meat the meat three hoop pop meat, express <laughs> the meat three p- me, the meat three point shooter the meat hoop express pop express Thank all right there we go wow we we are not wordsmiths um so <laughs> that was brutal uh no so the Cinder- the Cinderella teams you know the Fairleigh Dickinsons of last year who beat Purdue 
Um, we saw, if you guys remember, Dunk City, uh, the Florida Gulf Coast team. So let's think of some Cinderella's this year. I mean, uh, a Cinderella, I, mean, I, I think we got to look at like the, I think we got to look at that ladder match, Nick. I think we got to look at that for like some Cinderella teams and think about who's in that, that maybe like the, like DIY. I would put them as a 15, 16 seed. It's 10 years in WWE, and they haven't ever been yeah. to WrestleMania, and they're finally getting their spot. Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. I remember 10 years ago in 2014, right before Tommaso Ciampa went to the WWE, I saw him in Rhode Island at the West Warwick Convention Center. And believe me, it ain't a goddamn convention center. It's a really hot building in West Warwick, <laughs> Rhode Island, which is a dump. And I can say that because I'm from Rhode Island. So... I saw him right before, and now he's on the main stage of WrestleMania 10 years later. So I would put, I think Gargano and Ciampa, they fit the bill for that, for that Cinderella story. Can they end up winning the titles at WrestleMania, the tag titles? Who knows? We're going to see. We're going to see, but that's the magic of March Madness right there, baby. I think I'm going to put Liv Morgan as a 16th Ooh, seed because but it, I think she's super disrespected. Does she have a like, match? Well, I think she's going to – well, I don't know if it's necessarily a match, but I think she's going to be impactful enough. Like, mm. I think they're positioning her for something here. Something. I think so, like, yeah. I'll put her there. I'll put Nia Jax there. I'll put every woman that is not Rhea Ripley right now and Becky Lynch. You're putting Nia Jax like, as, a, as a Cinderella, as a 16 mm, seed. Maybe she's not a Cinderella. She's a little bit higher than that. But I think Liv fits the bill. Like, Liv Morgan, to me, should be much higher. But I feel like she, for some reason, man, like, she's just not getting her flowers. She had one run with the title, you know? They didn't let her keep it. They didn't really let her run with it. She has to constantly play from underneath, right? Mm -hmm. She's never seen as a threat, right? But she could make a run. Like, she could. If she became the WWE Women's Champion tomorrow, people would be like, man, I can't. Okay. But people would believe it. It'd be like, wow, okay, I can get behind this. And everyone loves her. Everyone loves to root for, for Liv, and everyone loves to root for a Cinderella story. Yep. That's what I'm they do. With. They do. Um, One more. Okay. Let's hear it. What do you got? Who, who's getting snubbed? Who's snubbed? Who? Oh, man. I'm trying to think of who is snubbed. I'm very happy Awesome Truth is going to be in that tag in that tag match. They're so entertaining. Um, and obviously great for those guys. Been there forever. But who is getting snubbed this year? I mean, you. Could. I already have my. Answer. Uh, well, let's hear you. you. I've, I've talked enough. I want to hear who you got. I'll tell you who I'm getting. Who's getting snubbed? And he's not even in. He's not even in the WWE right now. It's Matt Cardona. Oh yeah. Why? Where's the con like, Where's the contract trips? At what point? At what point? Are we gonna bring him home? At what point are we gonna say, listen, WWE could use. Listen, he's clearly showing that he could be a great heel. And he knows how to work an audience and that he's willing to put in that work. I mean, you want to talk about a guy who you put him on the house show circuit and you're going to get 110% every single time and be a legit attraction. There you go. You can put him on TV right now. And he has a built-in story, built-in story that could be weaved everywhere, both as a baby face and a heel, right? And, I, you know, like there's two shows. There's Raw and SmackDown. You know, I kind of feel like Raw has that. Raw has three hours. Mm -hmm. I feel like they need a little bit of something. They could use another guy there. They can use another guy that understands the business, has brands equity, whether it's Zack Ryder, Matt Cardona, but should be Matt Cardona. To me, he got snubbed. That's he should be snub. at WrestleMania this That's year. That's a good snub. Period. I think other than that, I mean, I would say if you go down the list, uh, but we don't know. Where, and they might be in a match. We don't know yet. You know, it's a couple big, weeks. Big trouble Ben Bishop. Gonna, well, big obvi Bishop. Ob obviously, folks, just had a great match with Matt Riddle. By the way, folks, Matt Riddle, it, if not, he is a top 10 pro wrestler, pro entertainer in the world. And I'm not trying to be biased because I just worked with him. But don't disrespect him. You squashed him, him right? Don't you squashed him. I beat him in 10 seconds. But don't disrespect him. <laughs> no. No. Didn't take an RKO, though. Didn't take one. They blocked, it, blocked it twice. Real too, too big. Nah, he, too, can't, he, he can't get that The match will be out soon. The match will be out soon. He's athletic, but not athletic but enough. But I want to tell you, guy's an absolute beast in that ring. And I would have had to be a giant piece of shit for that match to be bad. Thankfully, I'm not. And the match was good. But Matt Riddle is unbelievable. Top 10 wrestler in the world. I'll say that right now. Respect that guy. He'll be back in the E in one or two years. Watch. But um, a snub for me, um, 
that's my snub, actually. He should be there. He should be contending for a top title, if not a mid-card title in WWE. I'll give Matt Riddle that um, that honor there. But also, I would say, you know, we don't know yet, but Braun Breaker, where's he? You know, I think yeah, what's I think, he doing? I think he should have a match. Maybe he wins that big schmaz Andre Battle Royal shit that, <laughs> you know, happens every year that, that no thing, one man. likes. I'd rather him. And now, it's rather on, it. now it's on SmackDown the night before WrestleMania. <laughs> like, yeah. We knew that was coming. That was such a, that was such a, did that come out when Andre had the, uh, the, the documentary? I think so. It, it's, I mean, it that's such a Vince thing. Uh, it's, it's, it's every, you know what it is? It's everyone gets a payday. He's trying to get everyone a payday on Mania. Give them some. I get it, but they made it out to be a big deal. And they had guys like Mojo Raleigh win it. Like, get well, the yeah. fuck out of here. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> so that was supposed to be, that was supposed to be rest in peace, Luke Harper that year. But then Gronk mm -hmm. Gronk showed up and was like, "Oh, we gotta put gotta have Mojo in." <laughs> that was basically it, man. I'm sure, the boys weren't happy. Um, but yeah, I'd say Braun Breaker's a snub for me. He needs to have a moment there. Got to get him something. Um, Lashley, Lashley. What about the Street Profits? What are they doing? I, I I don't know. You know, do they have a match? So it's. I think Montez Ford is cool. Montez Ford's cooled off. I think they could do something there with him. I think he's awesome. Also, obviously Lashley. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I think yeah. we, there's, there's definitely a few, few snubs and not everyone can have a spot. You know, not everyone should have a spot, but definitely some people that I think are deserving of a spot. Yeah. Ford, especially. I mean, he, he I feel like maybe they're going to be in that ladder of... match. I don't know. We don't know yet. We well, know. I know, but like how many times are you just going to have him be like a, a star in like a ladder match? I know. Like eventually he, he's got to break off. I hate to say it about docs and I understand like he's obviously putting in that work. You know, he's lost weight. He looks really good. Montez Ford is a star. Also, I mean, there's I'm not, nothing, there's nothing, and he's with Bianca. Like you could, there's so much money to be made there. They're doing the show. Yep, he looks incredible. He's, he's a, got size. He's, he's so put good. size on. He's he can talk on the mic. Yeah. he's a guy, man. Like I think he he's going to be a monster. Oh, Chad Gable as well. Chad, oh, Chad that's Gable. the number one snub. Yes, we can't believe we forgot that. Yes, Chad Gable is the ultimate snub for WrestleMania. But it looks like they're trying to do something. So I, I hope. I hope we somehow Chad Gable is in, is involved here. Now, unfortunately, folks, you know we missed. We, we're not going to get some of the top dogs, the top dogs that are out of the. We'll call it our tournament this year, or you know WrestleMania. We're not going to get CM Punk. We're not going to get Brock Lesnar for two totally different reasons. But right. you know, unfortunately, that's that's the uh, that's that's, that's how the cookie breaks. that's how the cookie crumbles, or that's how the the muffin from what's it the place that CM Punk likes it. in Chicago crumbles. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, anyway, guys, that's it. That's a little March Madness as the wrestling fans are dummies um, special. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, Ben, do you have anything else to say to these marks? Nothing. My match with uh, Matt will be coming out soon. Please watch it. It was a very good match. Got a lot of really good feedback from the hundreds of attendants in Glen Burnie, Maryland at that. American Legion post whatever number it may be. So that'll be coming out soon. Folks, buy the merch. We still have t-shirts available. Why not? Meat Pop Express merch right behind me, as you can see. Buy some t-shirts. Help support the pod. Subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe, whatever all these gimmick guys say. Other than that, folks, let's keep it positive. Keep it trucking. Keep the shades on because the sun never sets on a cool guy. Later, Marks.